What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we are opening up one of my favorite sets ever. I love this set. Planar Chaos, it is awesome. It's full of really, really sweet stuff. Uh, I love it because it's the Chaos, obviously. The Chaos version of Magic where cards that were in one color identity got messed up and thrown into another color identity. Uh, if you think about it, Damnation is a Black Wrath of God. All that kind of stuff. Sun Lance is sort of a lightning bolt, but for white, like it's just weird. But I love it. It's awesome. A lot of really, really cool cards in this that I hope we get, uh, but we'll talk about those as we go through. And of course, we'll do the best we can to figure out what our pack one pick one would be if we were in a draft scenario. So we'll figure out uh, hopefully some direction for a deck if we were actually going to start drafting. So we'll kick it off. We have a Dawn Charm. Uh, there was a cycle of these. This is an instant for one and a white. Choose one, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn or regenerate target creature or counter target spell that targets you. Uh, this is a really interesting card and again showing off that really weird sort of planar shift. Obviously the first two things, uh, well specifically the first one is really a very white mechanic just in general, uh, but regenerating target creature that generally falls under green and then countering a target spell is very blue. Perfect example of what planar chaos does. I don't really like this card very much for draft uh, it just doesn't do enough, unfortunately. It's not very proactive. Uh, slivers. I love slivers. So a 3-3. Three, three, uh, for 4 and a black, this is the spitting sliver. Uh, all slivers have first strike. So these are all relatively simple cards, generally speaking. They give all slivers an ability. And they do give themselves the ability. So in this case, this is a 3-3 three, three first striker for 5. Not all that great. But if you have another sliver or two, they all also gain first strike just off of this one card. Uh, so they build each other up in a really, really crazy way. I don't recommend drafting slivers uh, just because it's very, very hit or miss. You really have to have a few payoffs to make it worth it. Uh, but if you can get it, by all means, go for it. It is sweet. I do not particularly care to pull this one. Uh, this isn't really a reason to be in slivers, but it is a good card. Uh, Meyer Boa is a 2-1 for 1 and a green. It has Swamp Walk, and you can pay 1 green to regenerate it. This is just an okay 2-drop. It's, like, perfectly fine. I don't love it, uh, but it does have some incidental upside against any black decks, and not only that, but it's a little bit tougher to kill than a normal 2-drop or a normal creature. Uh, again, not very exciting, to be honest, though. Uh, Deadly Grub is a 3-1 for 2 and a black. It has Vanishing 3, so this permanent comes into play uh, with 3 time counters on it, and at the beginning of your upkeep, remove a time counter from it. Uh, when the last one is removed, you have to sacrifice it, which is a little weird. Uh, vanishing was an interesting mechanic. Uh, but when it's put into a graveyard from play, if it had no time counters on it, put a 6-1 green insect creature token into play with this creature can't be the target of spells or abilities. This card's really powerful uh, on the onset. It's really, really strong. It's a 3-1 for 3, which obviously kind of sucks that it has only one toughness, but uh, it is on curve in terms of power goes. Uh, and then obviously if you can make it last three turns, you get a 6-1 giant guy that can't be the target of spells or abilities, uh, basically having Shroud. The problem is the, both of the creatures have one toughness. Um, that being said, I feel like this is the most powerful card other than maybe the Sliver that we have so far. So I, I'm kind of okay with it. Uh, kind of like this card better. Um, okay. Uh, Setaniel Wood Readers, uh, I'm so sorry if I'm messing that up, but two and a green for a 1-4 with Kicker. Uh, you can pay two and a green, and if you paid the Kicker cost, uh, you draw two cards as this comes into play. This is a really, I think, just solid three drop. Um, obviously a 1-4 on three is like, it's fine, it's gonna block for a while, uh, which is perfectly fine at three, but, uh, if you can pay the Kicker cost, this is card draw in green which does not happen very often. So I really do like this card. Again, not an amazing, amazing card by any means, uh, but I do kind of like it better than what we have so far. Uh, Brain Gorgers, 4-2, two, uh, two, excuse me, for 3 and a black. Uh, when you play Brain Gorgers, any player may sacrifice a creature. If that player does, counter it. Uh, and this also has a madness cost, which basically means if you were to discard this card, you can pay the madness cost and play this card as it's being discarded. It's kind of weird, but... Uh, that cost is one and a black. 
I really like this card actually. It's quite good. Uh, a 4-2 for 4 is perfectly fine in a set like this. Uh, and then the upside of Madness just makes this even easier to cast because there are plenty of Madness enablers. Uh, on top of that, it forces your opponent to either just deal with it with a, a, a trade or a removal spell or something like that, or immediately sacrifice a creature. Obviously, there are instances where this will not be as good if they have a token deck or something like that where they can just sack a token. It's not a big deal. This has this gets way, way worse. Um, but so far, I feel like it's uh, okay. I keep going to the next card. Uh, Keldon Marauders, a 3-3 three, three for one and a red. It has Vanishing 2, so it's going to go away in two turns. But uh, when it comes into play or leaves play, it deals one damage to target player, and it's ahead of the curve at a 3-3 three, three for two. This card is great in red. Uh, this is exactly the kind of red card you want. Absolutely perfect. I love it. Uh, brute Force, a instant for one red target creature gets plus three plus three until end of turn. This is the red giant growth, again showing off the planar chaos uh, mechanics. This is a great, great combat trick. Absolutely fantastic. I would love to have it with the Marauders, uh, but I definitely would take the Marauders first. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, Piracy Charm. So choose one instant for bl for one blue. Target creature gains Island Walk until end of turn, or target creature gets plus two minus one until end of turn, or target player discards a card. Uh, this I like much more than the other charm. I think it's pretty good. Uh, you can either give something Island Walk, making it unblockable, which is great. Uh, you can use this semi as a removal spell or a pump spell, depending on the creature that you're targeting. Or you can just use this to get a card out of the opponent's hand, which is also quite good. Uh, I like this not more than the Marauders, though. Uh, Seal of Primordium, an enchantment for one and a green. You sacrifice it and destroy target artifact or enchantment. This is prime sideboard tech. Absolutely fantastic for the sideboard, but not first pickable. Uh, enslave, an enchantment for four and two black. Enchant creature, you control it. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if uh, the enchanted creature deals one damage to its owner. Uh, this is a really interesting card. I feel like this is probably pretty good, honestly. This seems great. Uh, so I think I would want that over the Marauders, but I might be wrong. Uh, Sophic Centaur, uh, again, I apologize if I'm butchering the name. A 1-1 one, one for three and a green. Uh, it, you can pay two and two green, tap it, discard a card, and you gain two life for each card in your hand. I'm not a fan of this. Uh, I don't think it's all that good. I think there are instances where you could make a case for it, but it comes in really late, and it's a life gain card in limited, which not very good. Plus, your it's card disadvantage just to gain some life. That just seems bad all around. Uh, Malik of the Dawn, a 2-4 for 2 and 2 white. It has flying, and you can pay 3 white to regenerate it. This seems really good, honestly, in limited. Uh, it'll stick around because it has a big butt, uh, and it has flying, which means it's going to poke through some damage. It doesn't come in too late for being a 2-4, I don't think. And you can regenerate it, which is pretty sweet. I'm unsure about which is better there. Um, and then our rare here is Spell Shift, 3 and a blue for an instant, counter target instant or sorcery spell. Its controller reveals cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals an instant or sorcery card. That player may play that card without paying its mana cost, then he or she shuffles his library. Don't like this card, uh, absolutely terrible and limited. Oh, okay, but we did get a foil rare. Uh, Teneb the Harvester, 3, a black, a green, and a white for a 6-6 six, six flyer. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player, you may pay two and a black. If you do, put the target creature card in a graveyard under your control, uh, into play under your control. That's definitely the pick in my mind. Yes, it's three colors, but uh, I think it's splashable for sure. I really, really like this. I think it's sweet. It'd be really good to get that in slave on the way back around, though I really doubt you would. Uh, but this is definitely my pick. Let me know in the comment section below if you agree with me. Uh, if you don't, let me know that too. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment anyway. And of course, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack a Back video.